great razors. And uh, so we'll be looking at uh, the femtosecond laser and the advantages. The first femtosecond laser that was introduced was the infrared, and then it has improved over four generations from 15 uh, hertz to uh, 150 hertz, and then. Uh, Coming to refractive surgery, what are the expectations of the patients? It has to be ultra-precise and ultra-safe because the patient does not want to wear a refractive to correction after the procedure. And since it is an elective cosmetic procedure, it has to be very safe with minimal side effects. LASIK, of course, has been the gold standard uh, so far among refractive procedures, but what is lacking? Examiner lasers nowadays have become very precise with safe 3D, now 6D tracking, 7D tracking, some companies claim, wavefront, cyclocaution tracking. Most complications in LASIK are due to the microkeratome and usually because of flap problems. Jamming of the microkeratome, infections, DLK, you can also have uh, transmission if you don't, if you're reusing blades of HIV hepatitis, the worst problem of Ectasia can be there if you have thicker flaps, if the patient is prone for it, epithelial in growth, induced high output patients. These are all major issues that can be there uh, with LASIK. And so many surgeons, especially in Europe, went back to surface ablations, especially because of the risk of ectasia and flap problems. But now we have, with the femtosecond laser, we are able to do a subwarmance ketamine uses and have a 90 micron flap. So you get the best of both worlds. You get the comfort and the wow factor of LASIK and you have the safety of surface ablation. So when you're using a femtosecond laser, you have both the wow factor, the safety, the accuracy, and also the risk of complications. If you look at a microkeratome cut, typically this is the lamellar structure of the cornea. The microkeratome cuts deep in the periphery and thinner in the center with poor diameter and centration control. You can get decentered uh, flaps. But, but if you look at the <coughs> laser, it cuts a thin planar flap with precise depth, diameter, and centration control. You can also adjust the centration even after docking and applanation. The femtosecond laser flaps also are thin and uh, uniformly uh, and uniform. You can see that this is like a 90 micro, a micron uh, flap attempted and you have been able to achieve within 5 microns. So it's very precise when you use a laser but with a micro you get a meniscus shaped flap which is typically thicker in the periphery. Here the target is 160 microns but you can see in the periphery sometimes it goes up to 187. So, and we all know that the peripheral uh, cornea contributes more to the biomechanic stability. If you have a very thick flap in the periphery, it reduces the biomechanical stability, it can give us refractive changes and uh, make the patient more prone for ectasia. Even if you look at the bed, uh, the characteristics of the bed are much better with, with the femtosecond laser. The other issues are, uh, the safety issues are suction loss during the procedure. If you have a suction loss during the microkeratome uh, procedure, you have to abandon the procedure, postpone the surgery for at least three months, and then recut a flap. But with the femtosecond laser, procedure can be continued in the same sitting on the same day, using the same interface, and it can be successfully completed. There's no risk of free flap or buttonhole with the femtosecond laser. There's a reduced risk of infection and DLK. The initial lasers had peripheral DLK, but now the faster lasers, you hardly have any DLK. Lower incidence of dry eye, because you have a thinner flap, the deeper nose are not cut, less induced ablations, but better biomechanical stability, which in turn translates to lower risk of ectasia and better stability of the flaps. Okay, this is, uh, sorry, the video is playing, so I'll play from. I just wanted to show you what happens if you have a suction loss uh, during the femto. So this is a case where we are docked and the flap is being cut with the femtosecond laser. You can see the uh, OBL and you can see that the inferior skin is showing there and then see there is a, just when the side cut is being made there is a suction loss which has happened here. So 
don't change the patient interface, you can again go back and then apply the suction and apply the cornea. And then the important part of the centration, you can slightly reduce the diameter of the flap. And the side cut is not performed, then you can go ahead. You can see that the diameter is slightly smaller, and then I'm able to cut the flap there. It is suction, and you can see that you're easily able to lift the flap. If this had happened uh, with a microkeratome, then you would have had to have abandoned the procedure. Many of patients uh, come from uh, distant places, it's very difficult for them to come back, wait for three months. Some of my patients even uh, come from abroad, so this is a boon. If you have any suction loss intraoperatively, then it's very easy to manage uh, with the pentosuction laser, and you can uh, go ahead and then continue the procedure. <coughs> so, if you look at the wavefront characteristics between the the femtosecond uh, laser and the microkeratome. The top being the microkeratome, you can see without any ablation. Sorry, there is some. So even without any ablation, just with the flap uh, being cut, there is a lot of induced ablation, especially spherical ablation. Um, these are patients, these patients cut with the microkeratome on top, but as you can see with the um, femtosecond laser flaps, you hardly have any induced ablation, spherical ablation, and it's uniform in all the patients. So the variability reduces of ablations. Even this, this is the point spread function, you can see it's much better with the femtosecond uh, flaps. Uh, the response analyzer, this was studied done by George Alvio, and we found that um, six months post-operatively, the ORA scores were much better with the internalism. It was almost similar to the uh, PRK. The biomechanical effect of LASIK with internalism is equivalent to that of surface separation was what he concluded in one of his uh, papers. And also the uh, Navy approved uh, LASIK only with the uh, femtosecond laser with the internalism in May 2007. They conducted extensive uh, studies, uh, data answers uh, studies, and even NASA approved the um, LASIK with the micro uh, with the femtosecond laser. They did a comparative study uh, between the microkeratome and the femtosecond laser, and then even they found uh, <coughs> that the contrast sensitivity is better and uh, driving at night and uh, Driving performance is, at night is much better with the wavefront guided femto flap than with the conventional uh, microcarrier dome, and the flap was stable enough even if the patient, uh, even if the pilot had to eject uh, mid air, if there was any casualty. There's no dislocation of uh, the flap, and the quality of vision is also good enough for a pilot to land his million dollar aircraft on an uh, aircraft carrier at night. So this was uh, they compared. Uh, uh, three uh, microkeratomes, uh, the mechanical MAGS enhanced tome and the femtosecond laser, and this was the, they found that the uncorrected vision for stay post op was much better with the femtosecond flaps. My personal experience uh, when I started LASIK with the microkeratome was almost about uh, 15 years, 16 years ago. First 400 cases I had one three flap, one buttonhole, one half flap, two kilos of DLK. Whereas my first 400 cases in the interlace, uh, there were no complications. So we have entered a new era in laser vision correction, bladeless uh, LASIK. This has further gone ahead and now femtosecond lasers are even more advanced and now I'm using the Relax uh, Smile uh, technology with the Resumax, which is a flapless, bladeless technology. Uh, Six-step procedure that I don't want to encroach on uh, Dr. Rupal's uh, talk next time, uh, which is next, but uh, you can see that the number of steps are much lesser with this, and it's a single step, all per second laser, precisors, corneal biomechanics, that uses dry eye, and uh, is much more stable. What I would like to um, 
controlled with this. We did a comparative study between controlled AC and relaxed mind uh, for 50 hours in uh, each group. And uh, this was the pre op uh, um, data there. And we found that the post op uncorrected vision first day 6 6 in the 88% uh, in the racing group, 96% in the smile group. So, smile patients were actually better on first post op day. And uh, the aberrations also, if you can look at it, uh, when you compare that between the racing and smile, uh, post operatively both groups had an increase in uh, aberrations, but the smile group had less increase in uh, aberrations than the pepper racing group. And if you look at dry eye, we did uh, shamas and uh, t butt and osmolarity. All of these showed that the dry eye was much lesser in the smile group when compared to the lacing group. Even the contrast sensitivity was, there was a drop in contrast sensitivity in both groups, but lesser so with smile groups, especially at uh, the three month uh, period for higher uh, special frequencies. So I would like to conclude that femtosecond lasers have changed the way we practice refractive surgery. We have the bladeless LASIK now and we have the uh, bladeless, flatless, all femtosecond uh, smile now, which Dr. Rupert will be talking more on. And then um, I think the femtoseconds are here to stay and uh, they're here to give much better results to our patients and uh, uh, much more safety and comfort to the patients. Thank you very much.